Hello, and thank you for joining me today for part two of my video as I make my way from Shrewsbury to Telford along Route 81 of the National Cycle Network. In the first part of this video, we made our way from the centre of Shrewsbury along the mostly traffic-free route to the village of Uffington, just outside Shrewsbury. And if you want to watch that video, I'll put a link on screen now. If we take a look at the Sustrans map, we can see that the route from Uffington to Telford is entirely on road, so I've definitely picked the right weapon of choice with my road bike to complete this ride. Although when we get to Telford, there will be some more traffic-free sections. After a short ride through the village of Uffington, we take a left onto a quiet single track lane and this sets the tone for most of the journey to Telford. From Uffington to the edge of Telford to the area known as Wellington, or is that a town in itself? Let me know in the comments. It's about nine miles. We're then gonna do about another five miles across Telford, right to the eastern edge of the town, where Route 81 links up with Route 55. Not far from Uffington, we cross the route of the old Shrewsbury Canal. We followed the route of this disused canal as we made our way out of Shrewsbury. And we will cross paths with the old route of this a couple more times in this ride. It's hard to notice the old canal bed as you cycle across it. But if we look on Google Maps, it's quite clear where the canal used to run. As the old canal heads south to avoid Hormond Hill, we continue east and have a small gradient to make our way up as we come close by to Hormond Hill. You can't miss Hormond Hill standing proud to the north of the route, but if you take a look to the south, there's some wonderful views of the South Shropshire Hills. A couple of miles from Uffington, we come into the village of Upton Magna. As we pass through the village, you'll see the church of St. Lucia on your right, which has parts dating back to Norman times, and as we come into the centre of the village, some lovely Tudor buildings, as well as an old fashioned signpost letting us know how far along Route 81 we have to go until we get to Wellington, as well as letting us know that we're also crossing Route 45 of the network at this point. It's another couple of miles until we reach our next village, and along the way the route is again well signposted with the little blue signs being there, as long as you look out for them. It's also worth looking out along this section for the Reekin Hill, which towers to the southeast just outside Wellington. Legend has it that this hill was created by a giant who had a spade full of dirt who was looking to dam the River Severn just outside Shrewsbury in order to flood the town. Fortunately, after becoming lost and tired, he dumped the dirt just outside Wellington, creating the 1335 foot Reekin Hill. After passing through the village of Withington, and past its pub, the Hare and Hounds, we'll cross a small bridge that you may not even notice is there. But this is the point where we cross paths again with the old Shrewsbury Canal, which was left abandoned in 1944. After another couple of miles of riding, we come to a T-junction where we need to take a right turn, as directed by this slightly overgrown sign. It's then just a short way until we reach the crossing of the River Turn. There's a lot going on at this river crossing. Just before the bridge, the River Roden joins the River Turn and they make their final journey down to the River Severn not too far away. There's a modern sluice just slightly upstream. This was built in the 60s to keep the river level high for the All Scott Sugar Beet Factory just upstream from here. It was also the site of a corn mill that actually operated all the way back from 1100 AD until 1962. Moving on from the River Turn, we make our way towards a crossroads, which we head straight across, past the Grove Inn, and then under the main Telford to Shrewsbury railway line. We then make our way to the village of Charlton, where we take a left turn and head towards the village of Rockwardine. I'm afraid the village sits on a bit of a hill, so there is an incline to make your way up as we get towards the village of Rockwardine. But this does mean we do get to get a bit of elevation and so when the hedges open up, you do get some great views across the open countryside of Shropshire. 
We can see here all the way back to Hormond Hill that we passed near the start of this ride. As you get close to the centre of Rockwardine Village, you'll see the church tower poking out the trees in front of you, before you pass the church on your left. This is St Peter's Church, and a church has been on this site since at least 1086, although the current building is believed to be of Norman origin. After we've passed through the village, we make our way towards Wellington. We again go under the main Shrewsbury to Telford railway line. And not far after this, we pass over another bridge, which crosses over the now closed Wellington to Market Drayton Railway. This became a victim to the infamous beaching cuts in the 1960s, but now makes a lovely cycle path all the way out to the area known as Bratton. The road eventually comes to a roundabout in the area of Telford known as Wellington. After the quiet lanes and villages that we've cycled through in between here and Shrewsbury, this really does feel like we're sort of entering back into civilization, where there's traffic lights and cars and houses and shops. The route avoids the pedestrianised area in the centre of Wellington by using the ring road to go around the outside. All of this section is on 30 mile an hour speed limit roads. But do bear in mind that these roads are fairly busy, so you will have traffic to deal with as you make your way around Wellington. But after a few twists and turns where you need to make sure you look out for those all important blue signs, you're back on a quieter street, as we make our way past the Reeking College, and then finally back onto a traffic free section of this route. This first part is incredibly narrow and quite enclosed, so do be careful as you go down here. It's not too bad on the road bike as the handlebars aren't that wide, but when I come down here on my mountain bike with its big wide bars, it, it can be a bit tricky when you're passing people. Thankfully this isn't a long section, and after taking a right turn, we do find ourselves on a much wider path with a segregated bike lane. This wider path continues as we make a left turn and head down the side of a railway. Now this railway is the Wellington to Stafford line, which actually closed to passengers in 1964 and to goods trains in 1966. But as you can spy from some of my GoPro footage, the tracks are actually still in place on this section. The short section from Wellington to Donington in Telford was kept open until 1991, serving the logistics base for the MOD at Donington. Now the track was lifted in 1991, but in 2008 it was actually reinstated, the track relayed, and it's now used to serve the Telford Rail Freight Terminal near Donington. After going under the railway, and over an overpass, down the side of a road, we eventually find ourselves back riding next to the railway, but on the other side this time, and again on a lovely segregated bike path. We end up at the Trench Lock Interchange, which is a very busy roundabout, or sort of two roundabouts, in Telford where the A442 passes through. Now the name Trench Lock gives away what actually used to be here. This was actually a lock on the old Shrewsbury Canal. This is the canal that we followed and crisscrossed as we made our way here from Shrewsbury. After redevelopment in 1977 for the town of Telford, unfortunately there is nothing left at this site of the canal at all. Moving on from Trench Lock, we make our way up a very quiet road, which vaguely follows the route of the old canal. We pass Trench Pool, which was used to store water for the lock. And at the edge of the pool, we come across the Blue Pig Pub. Now this is an interesting pub because it used to be called the Shropshire Inn. It was renamed the Blue Pig after iron that was made locally would turn a shade of blue after it cooled. After the pub we head uphill and up the old site of the incline plane which used to take the old canal tub boats up the hill and join the old Shrewsbury Canal to a network of older canals and give it a link to the River Severn at Coldport. At the top of the hill we take a right and head back onto a cycle path which heads over the busy A442 dual carriageway and past another pool called Middle Pool. The next mile or so of riding has a few twists and turns as it makes its way across Telford but predominantly staying on traffic free cycle paths. Some of these sections of cycle paths aren't the best quality but as long as it's traffic free I'm happy. We hit the road again at the bottom of Station Hill in Oakengates. 
This is a particularly steep section of road. From here it's about half a mile up to St George's with about an 8.5% average gradient with the first section being much steeper than that. It really is a bit of a lung buster. It's definitely a hill you will wish that you could fast forward through. But once you reach the top, that is the last hill that we have to climb before the end of this route. All that remains now for us is to make our way through St George's. Past the St George's C of E church on our left, past St George's Cricket Club, and on to where Route 81 meets up with Route 55 of the National Cycle Network. From here you can take Route 55 towards Newport and on to Stafford, or in the other direction, to Telford Town Centre and on to Coalport. Or you can carry on on Route 81 towards Shiftle and Wolverhampton. But for us this is the end of the ride. I really hoped you've enjoyed Route 81 from Shrewsbury to Telford. I really enjoyed making it and it's a great route. A lot of people are off put by road riding, but the lanes that this route takes in between Shrewsbury and Telford really do make for some great riding. They're really very quiet and offer some very pretty views of the Shropshire countryside. All that's left is to thank you for watching. Really do appreciate it. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it. And a subscription to the channel would be absolutely amazing. Thanks again and take care.